JCPS students are starting the week at home as the district works to fix its transportation problems. You may remember some kids didn't get home until nearly 10 p.m. on that first day of school. And at this point, classes are canceled both today and tomorrow. We're shooting for midweek. Um, I don't want to be negative. I certainly don't want to be skeptical, but we spent six months or more planning the implementation of this new uh, busing uh, plan that we instigated the first day of school. It failed miserably. So now we're saying we have to fix that. Do we go back to the old plan? Do we tweak the new plan? And hopefully we can do that in four or five days, but that sounds like a big challenge to me. JCPS said teachers are expected to show up for a regular work day tomorrow. The district also said it would communicate additional information to families and staff by this evening about the rest of the week. So we'll be keeping a very close eye out for that. Despite calling off school, all extracurricular activities, including sports, will continue today and tomorrow. And again, you're hearing from a former JCPS board member when that return to school seemed feasible. You just heard from him there. Dr. Polio sent a letter to bus drivers over the weekend. Weekend, reiterating they are not responsible for what happened on Wednesday. Polio writing, my team and I should have listened to you when your union leadership told us our transportation plan had holes in it that needed attention before school started. And for that, I apologize. He then listed some short term actions the district plans to take. Look at your screen right there. They include having JCPS vans and drivers available to take elementary students home or back to school when they don't have an adult waiting at the stop, allowing drivers to continue their routes instead of being delayed. They would also have a van or depots to take home students on late arriving buses so all other depot buses can continue their routes on time and having an additional JCPS staff member with a cell phone on that bus that has JCPS when that would include the longest most challenging routes they would be helping the bus drivers with those directions. We heard that this would be a huge part of that success ensuring every child is correctly tagged for their school and morning and afternoon buses reducing the length of routes with lots of stops starting with afternoon runs. Polio admitting at the end of that letter to bus drivers this weekend saying we cannot address the larger issues of longer routes, bus, buses crisscrossing the county and known traffic bottlenecks immediately. Well, Sunday, parents aired their grievances at the Democratic State Representatives Forum. Students also chimed in with their memories from that first day of school, many blaming the district's lack of communication with drivers and staff for all the chaos. Even teachers said that they felt that they were left in the dark. One saying they have no clue what they're doing and don't know when school will start back up. Lawmakers taking note of ways JCPS can improve fundamental themes were that JCPS needs to listen to the bus drivers, that the bus drivers are the experts on driving the buses, bus drivers should know their routes, and that the bus stops and the entire system were done by people with great software, but not a familiarity with our district and our community. Now, moving forward, Representative Daniel Grossberg says that they will include the recommendations in a detailed letter to school officials. In the meantime, JCPS will open more than 30 sites to provide meals to its students. Among them are the Academy at Shawnee, Crumbs Lane, Bates, Grace James, J-Town Elementary, and Watterson, all just to name a few. These sites will serve lunch on site from 11 to 1230. So they will also provide students with a snack bag to take home. We're hoping that um, this service will allow students to come in and get a nutritious meal and it'll also relieve some of that uh, financial burden that families were not anticipating. So um, it also kind of get them back in and socialize with some of their friends. We do have a full list of all the schools operating as meal sites on WHAS11.com. And for all bus transportation alerts and when JCPS does decide to make this a go back to school day, make sure you've downloaded our WHAS11 news app with alerts sent directly to your phone. In other news today, officials with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency are on site at that dangerous chemical laden home over in Highview. And the city says the controlled burn originally scheduled for this week is postponed while the EPA assesses the situation. Late last month, investigators found volatile chemicals and explosives at a home on Applegate Lane. And the EPA is now looking to better identify the types of materials inside that home and how best to remove them. While on site today, a portion of Applegate Lane immediately adjacent to the property will be restricted to local access only. 
Right now, the Carroll County community is mourning the loss of 16-year-old Bryce Stewart. Bryce was a student athlete who was starting his junior year of high school, a member of the football team and the cheerleading team. Carroll County Superintendent wrote in a statement, it is difficult to process and cope with the loss of such a young, vital life. Our heartfelt thoughts and prayers are with this young man's family. Carroll County High School Principal Amy Sutter said the campus and football field are open right now for students to have a safe space to gather and grieve together. Kentucky State Police have arrested a 40 year old man in his shooting death. We are following this developing story and we'll have much more on air and online beginning at 4 o'clock this afternoon. A massive loss for the Shelby County community. Walmart is remembering a decades long employee who became a pillar in this community. We are talking about Luke Morris, who worked at the Shelbyville Walmart for the last 30 years. And Luke's family told me he died in his sleep Saturday night, likely due to a heart issue. I followed Luke on one of his shifts back in February as he collected carts. He walked that parking lot for eight hours a day, five days a week, even in the snow and ice and on days like today, spreading joy along the way. His smile was contagious and he loved the WHAS crusade for children. Walmart asked the community to keep his family and Walmart co-workers in their thoughts and prayers. Kentucky State Police say a Tennessee man died in a motorcycle crash in Elizabethtown Friday. Troopers said Nicholas Carr was driving a motorcycle on Bardstown Road heading toward the city when he lost control and hit a concrete culvert. Carr died at the scene. Police believe speed was likely a factor. Kentucky businesses are gearing up for sports betting across the state. Governor Andy Bashir said seven of the state's racetracks have submitted applications to the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission, all to license sports wagering. Now, those tracks include Churchill Downs and the down zoned Ellis Park in Henderson, Cumberland Run in Corbin, Oak Grove Gaming and Racing, and the Red Mile in Lexington are also among the tracks who've applied. The applications include Bet GM. Uh, MGM, Caesars, DraftKings, and FanDuel. The Kentucky Horse Racing Commission is set to vote on granting those licenses at an upcoming meeting. For all details and a full list of applications, just head to whas11.com.